All right, so let's take a look at how to work a dihybrid cross, or sometimes called a two-trait cross. This problem gives us some information about tomato plants. It says that purple stems are dominant, purple stems are dominant over green stems, and red fruit is dominant over yellow fruit. And then it says that two tomato plants that are heterozygous for both traits are crossed. So we see the genotypes of each of the parents. Those are That's one parent and this is the second parent. And we can see that they're heterozygous. That means they have two different forms of each gene that they have. So they're heterozygous for stem color, they're heterozygous for fruit color. Um, so our first goal says, what are the possible gamete combinations? So we're trying to figure out what are the things that we write on the outside of the Punnett square? Those are the gametes. So to do that, uh, the Amoeba Sister video that we watched told us about the FOIL method for figuring out the possible gamete combinations. So the FOIL method says, look at the first letter of each gene. So that would be big A with big R. That's the F in FOIL. Look at the outer letters. So the big A with the little r. It's a second gamete possibi possibility. The inner letters, that would be the little a with the big R. And then the last letters, so that would be the little a with a little r. And notice since this parent has exactly the same genotype, they would have exactly the same gamete possibility. So there's four possible gametes based on this parent. Um, so we can go ahead and write those gamete possibilities down on the outside of our Punnett square. So big A with big R, big A with little r, little a with big R, little a with little r. That's one parent. And the other parent, since they have the same genes, get the same gametes going down the side. So big A with big R, big A with little r, little a with big R, and little a with little r. So we've got the gametes uh, represented here, the possible gametes, and now we need to determine the uh, combination of the gametes that would result from this particular parent cross. So this is just like we did with a regular Punnett square, except for now we are going to put in four letters into each one of these boxes. To try and keep things organized, you always want to put the same kinds of letters by each other. So in this case, we're going to put the A's with the A's and the R's with the R's. And again, to keep things organized, please always put the any capital letters first, whether they're coming down from the top or across from the side. So let's go ahead and fill out each one of these boxes. So this first box, we get a big A from here, a big A from here, big R and big R, right? We can just go ahead and put all of the, the possible combinations for each one, of these Punnett, each one of these boxes in the Punnett square. So again, big A with big A, big R with little r, big A with little a, big R with big R, big A with little a, big R with little r. Go down to the next row, big A with big A, big R with little r, big A with big A, little r with little r, big A, little a, big R, little r, Notice every single time I'm always making sure I put any capital letters first, lowercase letters second, um, and I'm always making sure I combined the two uh, gametes to form a possible offspring here. So I'm just going to continue going through all of the possibilities here, writing them all down, trying to make sure I'm very careful about it. And there is my completed Punnett square. So now, just like I did with my normal Punnett squares, I just have to list my genotypes and my phenotypes. But notice I have way more possibilities for genotypes and phenotypes because I'm looking at both traits at the same time. Um, so I'm just going to go through and I'm going to figure out all the different possible genotypes that I have. So I'm looking at just the gene combinations. So in the the, I, I, I like to keep track of it by actually marking in the boxes. So I look at this first box, I've got big A, big A, big R, big R. So this would be completely homozygous for both traits, homozygous dominant. And I, I've 
accounted for this square. So I'm going to put a line through it just to me to recognize that I've counted this one up. That was one out of 16 possible squares. That's the only one like it. So there's a 1 16th chance of having that particular kind of uh, trait. Now I'm going to go and look at my next genotype. I've got big A with big A, big R with little r. I have that here. And I also have that exact same thing here. So that's a 2 16th chance. 2 16th can be reduced to 1 8th. So I've got a 1 8th chance of having homozygous for the stem color, so big A, big A, and heterozygous for the fruit color, big R, little r. Now I go and find my next uh, possible genotype. Here's a big A, little a, big R, big R. I've got one there. I look through. Oh, there's another one. And those are the only two. So again, I write that down. 2 out of 16th, or that's the same thing as a 1 8th possibility of that genotype. Next up, I've got big A, little a, big R, little r. I've got one, two, three, four of those. So that's a 4 16ths chance. Uh, 4 16ths is the same as 1 4th. So I've got a 1 4th probability of having heterozygous for both gene types because four of the 16 squares were that way. Uh, I come here to this uh, genotype I haven't seen yet, big A, big A, little r, little r. Uh, I have just one chance of that genotype. So that's a 1 out of 16th chance again. Um, I look through. Next I've got big A, little a, little r, little r. I've got one here and one there. That's a 2 16ths chance. Or that's the same as saying uh, a 1 8th chance. Uh, next up I've got little a, little a, big R, little r. There's a 2 16th chance of that again, which is 1 8th. I have little a, little a, big R, big R. There's a 1 16th chance of that. And then finally, little a, little a, big R, excuse me, that was little r, little r, and a 1 16th chance of that. So if I want, I can check that I have accounted for everything by adding them up. That's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 16. So I've accounted for all the possible genotypes here. Notice there are nine different possible genotypes. Well, those nine genotypes don't represent nine different phenotypes. Because remember, anytime I get one copy of a dominant gene, I have that trait. So anything that has even one copy of a capital A has the dominant trait of purple stems. And anything that has at least one copy of the capital R gene has red fruit. So I can look through and I can say uh, there will be some with purple stems and red fruit. Um, so as I look through here, purple stems, red fruit, purple stems, red fruit, purple stems, red fruit, purple stems, red fruit. So all of those have at least one copy of each dominant gene. So they, they would be both purple and red, purple stems, red fruit. So I can add those up. That's 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, sixteenths chance of having purple stems with red fruit. I've accounted for all of, all of these. Uh, now I look at those that have purple stems but yellow fruit. So at least one copy of the big A gene, but two copies of the recessive colored uh, fruit color gene, the little r. So uh, that would be purple stems and yellow fruit. And I can count those up. Um, so I have these, that one and those two. Um, so I've, I've kind of keeping track here of what I've used. So those three out of 16 would be purple stems with yellow fruit. Now I want to look for those that have green stems and red fruit. So that would be 
two copies of the recessive allele for stem and at least one copy of the dominant allele for fruit color. So two plus one more, that would be three sixteenths for that. And then finally, I want the one that is recessive for both traits. So that would be uh, green and yellow. So green stems and yellow fruit. And there's just one, I've accounted for those. So there's just one of the one out of 16 that would be that way. Uh, so then I can go through and I can answer these questions, which refer back to the different the actual different phenotypes. So how many would have purple stems and red fruit? I would expect 9 sixteenths to have that. Um, I could put that in my calculator and figure out that 9 sixteenths is about 56.25%. Um, how many would have purple stems and yellow fruit? That would be about 3 sixteenths or about 18.75%. How many would have green stems and red fruit? That would be about 3 sixteenths or about 18.75%. Um, and how many would have green stems with yellow fruit? That would just be 1 16th or about 6.25%. Uh, hopefully this helps. If you have questions, uh, please don't hesitate to ask.